Welcome and thanks for attending our presentation today. The Maple Brick Academy presents Looks Clean to Me by Bob Holmes. The following presentation contains information regarding basic cleaning practices for most common masonry surfaces. Basic cleaning practices. The information provided does not take the place of or eliminate the need for you to obtain architectural engineering or other design services provided by a licensed professional. So I have been a Prosecco representative since 1994, along with uh, representing Prosecco, Prosecco, I've been involved in brick manufacturing and mortar additives. So a grand total of over 40 years in the brick industry. In 2018, we established the Maple Hill Brick Academy for training of brick salespersons at the request of some of my brick manufacturers. And one day we try to give them the basics of the wonderful world of bricks. What to do, what not to do, what to say, what not to say. To date, we've had over 100 attendees, and our classes have also been attended by masonry supply stores, contractors, and even a few architects. If you're interested in attending, you can contact me or we can set something up. Our room is limited to about 12 attendees. The Brick Academy building, originally the Farmers and Merchants State Bank, was built in 1904 and was remodeled in the 30s after a fire. multi wide walls in this old building, a lot of stone. Uh, we estimate around 250,000 brick in these buildings. And they were all unloaded off of a train onto a wagon and laid by hand. Got a little backyard entertainment area after training, if so choose to get outside and take in the air of downtown Maypearl. We also have the option of a bar and a lounge area up front with our claim to fame, the longest shuffleboard in the county. I believe it's 24 foot. One problem when you go to training is finding an area that you can actually do work and actually put acid on a wall and show the reaction. And we've got this large outdoor area referred to as the wall that we do a lot of testing on. We do a little new construction cleaning. As you can see, we do a little, we do a little graffiti testing. So we do have a hands-on place where you can learn the ins and outs of of all the different kinds of things that you could come up with on a masonry job. So we're gonna have our learning objective spelled out today. Basically, we're going to explain the Prosecco philosophy on cleaning masonry. This philosophy is going to key on correct product selection, correct application instructions, establishing your equipment needs, on-site testing, Prosico is a firm believer in on-site testing, and also they're a firm believer in job site assistance with over 70 sales reps and 10 regional managers covering the United States and Canada. To sum it up, Prosico's philosophy is you, us, and the project. New construction clean down is very important. It's important to not just the mason, it's important to the general contractor, the building owner and the architect. You need to get it right the first time. Recleaning at the end of a job is very different because you're now dealing with windows, sidewalks and other acid sensitive materials. You need to get it right the first time. This statement is real commonly used in the historical preservation of masonry world. Use the least aggressive means necessary to achieve the desired results. This is something that we need to 
applied to new construction clean down as well. So what we're gonna do to show y'all an example, some examples of different strengths of products and what happens when they make contact with the wall, we set up a video, a time-lapse video of five minutes. First bottle, we're gonna have muriatic acid. This is gonna be left to right, one to six. We're gonna have an unnamed competitor A at one to six, unnamed competitor B at their recommended dilution rate of one to four, SureClean 600 detergent, one to six, SureClean Vanitrol, one to six, SureClean light duty concrete cleaner at our recommended dilution rate of one to three, Prosecco dilution rate of one to three. And then the last bottle, I just put some clay brick in there to show that, you know, the Vanitrol is not gonna pull the color out of the clay brick. And I dropped a little bit of a chunk in there just so you'll see that there is acid in that bottle. Time-lapse video, five minutes, and we will stop and discuss along the way. Remember, the stronger the cleaner, the more spent material, that could be acid, mortar, and detergent, you have to get off the wall. As you can see, the three to the left, muriatic A and B are starting to build quite of, well, the muriatic's not gonna build any detergent, soap, surfactant, whatever you wanna call it, because there's none in there. It's just a raw acid. So all it's doing is devouring the block. Competitor A is going at the block pretty hard, but they've got quite a bit of surfactant. It's starting to build a pretty good head up here. So this is the stuff you've got to get off the wall. Uh, competitor B is also starting to build a head. And as we can go on with this video, you're gonna see these two go. 600 and Vanitrol are pretty much just chugging right along. Uh, these products are really buffered. So you're not seeing a big reaction change in the amount of soap or actually a change in the amount of uh, in the bubbles in the bottle. So let's let's click on a little further. Let's start over so I can do it right. So as you can see, the head on these, the, the soap, the detergent, the surfactant is really getting heavy. So this is the material that you've got to remove off of that wall in order not to have streaks. Uh, the least aggressive products, the more buffered products, you're not seeing a drastic change in, in how these things are reacting. Uh, this is what you want. This allows your mason more time to manage his job. So what, what we did, we allowed the product to settle down a little bit so we could see how much material was pulled out of the bottles. As you can see, muriatic A and B pulled a lot of color. 600 Vanitrol, there's always a difference in the amount of color. 600 is gonna always pull more than Vanitrol. Uh, light duty pulled a little to nothing. It's a phosphoric. And then the clay brick bottle is, didn't turn red, so it didn't attack the clay brick. So even though acid-based cleaners do not react with the clay body of the brick, that does not minimize the need for least aggressive cleaner. So these acid products, uh, they can react with the additives in the clay body, such as manganese. Also, natural trace minerals or impurities that are found in the clay, such as vanadium salts, can also be reactive to acid-based cleaners.
improper cleaning practices and applying cleaner with more than 50 PSI can also contribute to possible secondary staining. So these, these harsh acids and proper cleaning can pull out these trace minerals in the clay. So who, who impacts the final impurities the most on the job? Well, unfortunately, a lot of times it's that guy with that uh, water hose. So having a trained cleaning crew separate from the brick masons is a very good plan. Prosico does offer training. You just need to ask. So here's an example of things that probably should have been discussed prior to the job. So there's nothing easy about cleaning a masonry wall. Uh, many challenges facing the cleaning crew and there are no shut shortcuts. It's a very methodical method. This picture shows a scaffold cleaning project here on the right. They switched to a lift over here, but as you can see, it was not a good idea because you can see where the scaffold went on the wall. It's very hard to clean off of a scaffold because you're pushed up against the wall. So right up in here, they didn't clean it as hard. And so it's just a terrible looking job. They switched to a lift over here, which they got a more even clean. Unfortunately, they had to over clean this to make it match this. So the architect was okay with the lighter joint. It just needed to all be one color. So there's nothing easy about cleaning a large masonry wall. Uh, one guy, I told him, I said, it's just kind of like eating an elephant. It's just one bite at a time. You can't get in a hurry. Just one bite at a time. So basic principles. Have a conversation about what you're going to wash and how you're going to wash it prior to starting the job. This could save you a lot of time, money, and for sure a lot of grief. You got to know your surface. Establish what you're trying to clean. There's lots of ways to know what to clean it with. There's, there's brochures. This is new construction cleaner brochure. It's got charts in it, pictures in it. You can also go to prosico.com. Also revert to the manufacturer's recommendations, which is always the first thing to check. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So this was a manufactured stone job and nobody talked about it. It was placed on the wall with a cast stone cap and red brick above it. And they ran the cleaner down the wall over the cast stone and down across the manufactured stone. Therefore they run it. There's no fix for this. If they had a consulted, they would have known that Sure Clean Light Duty Concrete Cleaner would have been our recommended product. Remember the video? This was the least aggressive of all, important when dealing with color sensitive manufactured stone. So looking on that job, they should have kept, they should have tarped off or plastic over the, under the cast stone, draped it down over the manufactured stone, cleaned the, cleaned the, after cleaning the stone, covered it, and then went up above it and rinsed down. Specify the right cleaner. Do not leave it up to someone who is not familiar with your job to determine the correct products. If you don't specify the right cleaner, you most likely will get whatever was left off of the last job. Don't leave it up to someone else to pick the cleaner. 600 detergent by SureClean is the most specified new construction cleaner by design professionals in the United States and Canada. New masonry cleaner, 600 new masonry cleaner. Vanitrol sensitive brick and stone cleaner is the second most specified new construction cleaner in the United States and Canada. Every bundle of brick has a bundle tag or a pallet tag or whatever you want to call it. This 
allows the manufacturer the ability to get critical information to the job site after the brick have left the plant. In many cases, the brick can be coming from very long distances from the job site, halfway around the country. These tags have numbers, phone numbers, website information, and they always have information on cleaning. First tag we're gonna look at starts out with a do not clean with muriatic acid or a pressure washer. It's kind of a generic tag. We recommend commercial masonry cleaning products in accordance with their manufacturers. Don't use mechanical brushes. Uh, what I take away from this is recommending what not to use is not the same as recommending what to use. Second tag gets more specific and it states, contact your representative for recommendations on the proper SureClean product. Being more specific on the recommendations makes it less likely for job site issues. So these, these bundle tags or pallet tags, is something that the manufacturers do do uh, and can do, those that aren't but they become a partner, Prosico partner. Being a Prosico partner is good business. You get great products for new construction as well as specialty cleaners. You have nationwide distribution, so products are available wherever your job might be or their job might be. You've got support on the job with over 70 reps and 10 regional managers. If you're dealing with Prosico, you have access to a lab, environmental department for wastewater runoff customer care and also they offer training and remember problems cost money time and possibly your reputation if you're not testing you're guessing so we know now that brick manufacturers are obviously against the use of harsh acids such as muratic on their products Muratic and muratic base products are not quality controlled and they're very impure, so they contain metal salts, which could end up on your wall. So in talking about muratic, the label on a bottle of muratic acid is, is, is pretty generic. Your application instructions are about four sentences long. Uh, they talk quite a bit about corrosion uh, it's pretty plain. There's not a lot there. In the precautionary statements, there's, there's uh, one line I've underlined about uh, fumes travel long distances and corrode or be destructive to metal, wood, masonry, fabrics, vegetation, and many other materials. So I take from this, if the directions for use is shorter than the precautionary statements, you have the wrong product for the job. Prosico believes in testing. Test, test, and more test. If you're not testing, you're guessing. When testing, be sure to use the same methods and materials as you would use on the job. If you don't, it's not a good test. So use the same dilution rate, the same amount of of the same rinsing methods, the same, the same pre-wet methods, everything the same. If you're gonna use a pressure rinse, use a pressure rinse. Follow the instructions on the product label. Unlike the muriatic acid, Prosico products are labeled and there's a lot of information on that label. Please follow the instructions on the label. Secondly, follow the data sheet. The data sheet is written to protect us all. It's to give you the best information that you can have to get the job done with the least amount of trouble. So stick with the data sheet. The data sheets are also available in Spanish and you can get those off prosico.com.
So let's break down the application instructions because we've, we've, we're a little more uh, direct in ours as far as what you need to do. Exterior services, that's what we're gonna concentrate on. And up at the top, it says multiple applications may lighten the mortar color. Well, that's because every time you apply it, you're pulling out a little more out of that joint as per our video. So we say go bottom to the top, thoroughly pre-wet with fresh water. We're gonna talk about bottom to the top a little more in the next slide. We say, a Prosico says apply the diluted solution freely from the bottom of the work area to the top, freely. We don't want to mist it on there. We want to get it on there freely. Let cleaning solution stay on a wall three to five minutes. Do not clean, do not let the cleaner dry into the masonry because it will leave residue or stains. Fresh water rinse the surfaces below cleaned to prevent streaking. Always be conscious of below where you're rinsing. Reapply cleaner and scrape off heavy buildup of mortar using a wooden scraper or a piece of brick. We're gonna talk about that. Scrapers can harm the masonry if you don't have the right kind. Working from the bottom area to the top, rinse with clean water. There's a lot of talk in here about water and we're gonna show you why. Reapply if needed. So we're gonna break this down in the next couple of slides. So. Keeping all surfaces wet below wash down is a way to minimize streaking and discoloration. So I tried to, the best I could come up with, so I, I wet this wall from bottom up and every time I squirt it, of course it runs across a damp surface or a wet surface, saturated surface. That keeps your cleaner from attacking the wall. Sure clean products are lighter than water, so they're not gonna go through the water into the wall whereas muratic and muratic base products aren't. So the, the, the pre-wet is so important. If you start at the top down and you do not keep the area wet underneath where you're washing and you get these streaks, you're going, that's going to show on your wall. So keeping all surfaces wet below wash down is the way to minimize streaking and discoloration. Acid rundown over dry surfaces cause streaks, particularly on mortar and slab. So if you're looking at a wall, uh, look at the slab. If you see streaks on the slab where the, the, the cement has been eaten out of the slab, you can usually follow that streak up the wall onto the mortar joint and you can see uh, the stripes. I call them tiger stripes. This was a job over in Louisiana and the GC and the Mason was trying to pawn it off on the, push it off on the manufacturer and said that their yellow brick was bleeding into the joint. Well, as y'all saw in the video, clay brick do not bleed. Uh, the cleaner doesn't make them bleed. So we looked at this up close and if you'll notice the streaks are underneath these scratches most of them are follow the scratches. And so we figured out that the mason was letting the cleaner run down the wall. It was accumulating in these scratches and then dripping out the bottom and tiger striping this joint. So instead of the manufacturer being in trouble, uh, it ended up being a follow the proper cleaning procedure conversation. And uh, and then they came back and re-cleaned it with 800 stain remover and took the burn off of the joint. We say don't use a metal scraper. Picture to the right shows why. Unrepairable damage to this brick over that scraper. We say use a slab off the job. It's the least likely thing to scratch a brick is the same brick that you're scratching on. So let's go into the equipment because sometimes in our world the least, the littlest thing gets us in the most trouble. 
So we're gonna go over this. We say use a soft fibered masonry washing brush, not a, not a deck brush, not a nylon brush. We say a soft fiber brush. We, Prosico says do not atomize. Uh, do not apply over 50 PSI because it can drive the chemical into the surface, making it, com making it hard to get a complete rinse. Test your equipment, make sure it meets this criteria. Rinse with enough water and pressure to flush the spent cleaner and dissolve soiling from the masonry surface and the pores without damage. Inadequate rinsing leaves residues which may stain enough water and pressure. We're gonna go over that. Use a, for best results, use equipment generating 400 to 1,000 PSI with a flow rate of six to eight gallons per minute. We're gonna show you how to establish your flow rate. Use a 15 to 45 degree fan tip nozzle. Uh, heated water will help in cold weather. Uh, test your equipment, make sure it meets this criteria. Rinsing pressures greater than 1,000 in the fan tip smaller than 15 may permanently damage sensitive masonry. Water flow rates less than six gallons per minute may reduce cleaning productivity and contribute to uneven cleaning results. Gotta have enough water. So let's talk about, we say you can spray it or brush it. Uh, we've established earlier that downstream injectors are too much, too much, uh, too much pressure, no more than 50 psi. You take a pump-up sprayer. The two pictures on the left, pump-up sprayer. You unscrew the tip off of it and reveal this open, uh, this open. I'll call it a just a channel, just an open hole. Uh, this will increase your volume but it won't increase your pressure so this will allow you to get a lot of material on the wall faster than going into the bucket if you so choose if you unscrew the tip off your sprayer and it's got these sideways gnawed holes in it you can't use that all you're going to do here is just squirt the guy to the left and the right of you so don't don't do this this won't work if you need more uh, volume, let's say you're trying to increase your production rate, you can use an agricultural sprayer. Uh, they give you more volume while ma maintaining the less than 50 PSI we recommend. The problem is most of these things are not corrosive resistance. They're pretty tough because they're spraying a lot of agricultural chemicals. The, the thing about these though, they're fairly inexpensive. So, you know, they can be replaced without a lot of, a, a, a lot of out of pocket. But we do have options on spraying if you so choose to spray. Talking about brushes, nylon brushes, blue brushes, yellow brushes, they don't have any absorption. So we took a nylon brush to the left and a soft fiber brush to the right. One dip out of a bucket of water, this is as much material as we got on the wall versus the soft fiber brush, which you can see we got a whole lot more on the wall and more evenly. This, will, this contributes to an even job. This contributes to an uneven job. The reason why we recommend soft fiber brushes and the long bristle brushes are the best. We talk in the, in the data sheet about pressure washers and fan tips. So fan tip, zero degree tip, needle tip, a lot of pressure uh, and bites into the masonry. This is a CMU wall with one coat of paint on it. So you can see that the, the needle nose of the zero degree bit right into it. There's no place on a masonry job for a zero degree tip. 15 degree tip, uh, still aggressive, not as bad as the zero, but you do have some a little wider, still too aggressive. We say 25 to 45. Here's a, here's a 25 in the green. You can see now we're wider and we're, we're removing less of the paint. 45 or 40, this is actually a 40. Got a wide 
pattern and less pressure. 40 would be the best. So let's figure out how many gallons of water we are getting on a, on a job. So we're going we're gonna to do the one minute bucket test. This is going to be kind of quick, but we can talk about it afterwards. Now this is a uh, three quarter inch hose, same hose on both buckets for one minute. There's no restriction on this hose. It's just coming right out. So we ran over and we're on the ground, probably six to seven gallons of water a minute. We're going to take that same hose and we're going to put a sprayer on it. And we're going to run it for the same amount of time. As you can see, that sprayer reduced our water volume down probably to 50%. This is real critical on a job. So after you've established your water volume, so we established that we've got six to seven gallons of water in that hose, let's figure out how to get it on the wall. So we get a splitter, they're, they're not a whole lot of money, and you run a second hose. Therefore, you've got two spray nozzles and they're, and they're both running wide open and you're pretty much getting all your volume. Uh, because rem remember, there's nothing wrong with too much water. There's no such thing as too much water on a masonry washing job. Two hoses is also good, it's safer. You've got one hose for mixing buckets and you got one hose for wetting. So it's, it's, it's a good thing to have multiple hoses on a job. If you've got 11 or 12 gallons of water a minute, we'll put three hoses on it. Just make sure you get all that water on the wall. So after all that is said and done, you want to get on the wall and clean it as soon as possible. Uh, follow the guidelines, clay masonry seven to 21 days, concrete masonry 14 to 28 days, high strength mortars three to seven days. All of these days will vary based on temperatures, but you've got to let your cement have time to set up before you start washing it. So best practices, know your surface. If you, don't, if, if you don't know, find out. Use the right product. Always test. Follow instructions on both the label and the data sheet and clean as early as possible. Every one of these steps is critical to having a successful cleaning job. So summarizing, what did we learn? Well, we learned number one, you need to have the right product for the substrate. Remember, there is not one product for all applications, regardless of what you read, as you saw with the buckets, with the bottles, these things all have different dilution rates, different strength. There's not one product for all applications. We know that you need to follow the directions on the la label in the data sheet. Do not deviate from these instructions. Got to have the proper equipment. Follow the recommended equipment recommendations in the data sheet. Soft fiber brush, water source six to eight gallons a minute, pressure limit of no more than a thousand PSI, 25 to 45 degree fan tip, and if you're spraying in it, no more than 50 PSI. Applications should be bottom to the top. If this is not applicable to your job, keep all areas wet below cleaning to minimize the chance of possible streaking. So it sounds like these, these three associations are actually four, MCAA, the, the BIA, the Capstone Institute, and the NCMA agree with what we've been talking about, because this is some of their guidelines. Do not use raw muriatic acid. Always test. One size does not fit all. Use least aggressive, yes, yet effective option. More water equals better results. Acids should be applied at low pressure. 
and the caption, good, it's unanimous. Looks like others follow the same philosophy. So we're getting near the end and we've there, this is comes out of the new construction cleaner and that's me on a wall in New Orleans. And a long time ago, they used to say to be an expert, you had to have a briefcase and drive more than a hundred miles. Well, nobody has briefcases no more. So I guess now I'll say you have to have a pocket knife and a hat and probably 40 years experience uh, to be deemed an expert. But this was on a job in New Orleans and uh, Part of this page, we talk about some basic questions and we've answered all of them so far, but we can quickly go over them. Uh, why do I need to clean vertical masonry bottom to the top? Well, I hope you know, but we're trying to minimize streaks. Product data sheet says to use a water flow rate of six to eight gallons per minute. You know, how do I know the flow rate? Use the bucket test. What tool should I use to clean mortar from brick? Best thing is a brick off the same job. We went over that in, in the presentation. Any other shortcuts for new construction clean down? Nope, doing it right costs less than the end. What's more expensive is to wash the building twice or thrice or sometimes four times or to run the brick. Don't jeopardize your job over a few bucks on some cleaner. Went ahead and added some that I think y'all probably hear are things that people might wanna ask. In Texas, it gets really hot in the summertime uh, and we get asked all the time, cleaning in the sun. No, it's it's, if possible, stay out of the direct sun. It's no different than washing your car or your truck in the sun. It's gonna get away from you. Uh, you're gonna, soap's gonna streak your truck, your car. It's gonna streak your brick wall. The hot sun, a hot wall will dry the cleaner prematurely on the wall. If you cannot avoid it, if you're trying to meet a schedule, you've gotta get off that job. You're gonna have to clean smaller areas and increase the water volume. So it can be done, but it's gonna really be slow and you're gonna really increase your chances of having a secondary stain because of the heat. Second question, I have a multi-substrate building, brick, cast stone, natural stone, colored mortar, and this is really common. Question, how do I choose the cleaner? Cleaner selection is based on the most sensitive, color sensitive substrate in the wall. So, uh, you would look at the, the most color sensitive substrate and that would be your cleaner. If in doubt, do a test panel of all materials and make sure that whatever you choose to use won't affect those products. So should I always do a sample panel? Yes, and always use the same means and methods as will be used on the project. Next question, is Vanitrol different from 600? We hear this a lot because our budget conscious customers will always say, well, isn't it just a watered down 600? No, it's not. Vanitrol is specifically designed for new masonry surfaces that are subject to vanadium, manganese, and other metallic stains. It is different. Next question, I wanna clean faster. Can I put the product on stronger? No, you should never deviate from the recommended dilution rates in the data sheet. More aggressive dilution rates will, will require longer rents due to the increased amount of spent material on the wall. So basically you're breaking off more stuff. So you're gonna have to hang around there longer to get it off, all off the wall. So you're actually probably slowing down your production. If you don't get all the spent material off the wall, you, you could have heavy staining and severe discoloration. So Use the least aggressive means necessary is what this means. Does cold weather affect cleaning? Yes, data sheet says this. Uh, our data sheet says do not clean below 40 degrees. Uh, 
cleaner won't hurt, won't hardly work because it's it's cold. Acid slow down in cold, but it's also below 40. You could have a, a freeze at night and your wall full of water. So follow the data sheet. Uh, you might have to vary your dilution rates when you're on a big job for a long period of time and your temperature goes from 40 degrees to 80 degrees over a period of days or weeks or months. So you need to always compensate for the cold weather if, if pay attention because you might not be getting it as clean at you know 45 degrees or 50 degrees as you are with the same dilution rate at 70 degrees. Next question, can I use a downstream injector for application? Not recommended. These downstream injectors, the dilution rates are very unreliable. The pressure is way too high. Uh, we don't want to force that acid into the wall. Uh, this is a shortcut that you don't want to take. Uh, Prosecco data sheet says apply with low pressure, less than 50 PSI. And we recommend keep your cleaner separate from your water source. So last question, so your best buddy's a mason, bricklayer, brick or whatever you want to call him. And he's looking for some good advice from you to keep him out of trouble. So I came up with three. Lay the wall as clean as possible. Because the cleaner you lay it, the less material you have to get off the face of the brick then you can use the least aggressive means necessary to remove the mortar from the face of the brick and make really sure that you do the simple bucket test. You know how much water volume you've got and you're getting that water on the wall to make sure you're getting a good pre-wet and a good rinse. So from your friends in May Pearl, Texas at the May Pearl Brick Academy, that is the end of this presentation. And if you have any questions, let me know.